Today we're going to talk about the Universal KU Band Satellite LNB. A Universal LNB is one of two main types used in KU Band Satellite Reception, the Universal as well as the Standard KU Band LNB. Now, a Universal LNB is called that because it is universal in the sense that it is usable anywhere in the world because it receives the entire KU band satellite frequency spectrum from 10,700 to 12,750 megahertz. If you receive Eastern satellites as they do in Europe and Asia, then you have to use a universal LNB or you're going to be missing out on a lot of channels. Now, in North America, the story is a little different. A standard KU band LNB is more than sufficient in North America since only half of the band is used here for broadcasting from 11,700 to 12,750 megahertz. The only exception to this is on satellite 117 West B where there's a few channels that are from Mexico that broadcast on the lower part of the KU band. So if you want to receive those, you need to use a universal LNB. But it's also important to remember that that satellite footprint only covers Mexico and part of the southern United States. I've tried to receive those with the universal KU LNB up here in Canada and have had no luck. Now, the universal LNB was first developed back in the 1990s when the Eastern satellites received in Europe and Asia started using the lower part of the KU band frequency spectrum. And because the universal LNB has the full KU band frequency spectrum to manage, it uses an extra switching system that is not used by standard KU band LNBs. Now, the universal LNB relies on voltage and signals being passed back and forth from the receiver to the LNB through the coaxial cable. And that is true not only for universal LNBs, but also for standard KU band LNBs. That voltage provides not only power for the LNB to work properly, but also to control the functions and channel movement as well. The universal LNB has to cover the full KU band frequency spectrum, both the low part of the band and the high part of the band. To switch back and forth between the low and high parts of the band, it uses a 22 kilohertz tone switching system. Now, how this works is when you select a channel that is on the low part of the band, the tone is actually turned off and that lets the low band channels come through from 10,700 to 11,700 megahertz. And when you select a channel that's on the high part of the band, the 22 kilohertz tone turns on and that calls down the high band channels, which cover 11,700 to 12,750 megahertz. So as the channel band switching occurs, so does the switching of the LNB's local oscillating frequency, which is used to ensure that the receiver correctly calculates what frequencies to find all of the channels at. Uh, local oscillating frequency is sometimes known as a mixing frequency, and this is used by the LNB to downconvert high frequency satellite signals to a lower frequency that's more suitable for traveling through coaxial cable. The uh, signals must be somewhere in the range of 950 to 2150 megahertz. And in order to manage the entire frequency spectrum, a universal LNB has to use two switchable local oscillating frequencies to ensure that these calculations are made correctly. So for the low band, a local oscillating frequency of 9750 megahertz is used. And for the high band, a uh, local oscillating frequency of 10,600 megahertz is used. Now this is where the universal LNB really differs from a standard KU band LNB. A standard KU band LNB can use a single local oscillating frequency of 10,750 megahertz to down convert those signals. And the reason is, is because it only has to manage half of the KU band frequency spectrum. So all the calculations fall within that range of 950 to 2150 megahertz. That's the correct signal range for signals to travel through coaxial cable down to the receiver. Now the next situation that the universal LNB has to handle is switching between polarities. 
all free satellite TV channels in North America are linear polarized. And what that means is, is that the signal wavelengths are all orientated in a line, either a vertical or a horizontal line, but the receiver can only decode one polarity at a time. To switch between vertical and horizontal polarities, the receiver uses a 13 volt, 18 volt switching system. Now this 13 volt and 18 volt polarity switch mode is used by both the standard and the universal KU band LNBs. So a typical standard KU band LNB splits the signals up into two groups, the horizontal or vertically polarized channels. But because the universal LNB manages the entire KU band frequency spectrum, the signals are split up into low band and high band, but also vertical and horizontal. So there are actually four groups of channels that the universal LNB has to manage. And here's how that is organized. For the low band, the universal LNB turns the 22 kilohertz tone off or to zero hertz and that calls in the low band channels and then the switching has to happen between vertical and horizontal. So 13 volts is used to call in the vertical low band channels and 18 volts is used to call in the horizontal low band channels. Now on the high band, the 22 kilohertz tone gets turned on and that brings in the high band channels and 13 volts with a 22 kilohertz tone on brings in the high band vertical channels and 18 volts with the 22 kilohertz tone on brings in the horizontal high band channels. And don't forget, all the while this is happening, the universal LNB also has to switch between local oscillating frequencies to calculate the correct spot for those channels to appear at the receiver. Here's what the setup looks like at the receiver menu. First of all, for the LNB type, you want to make sure you're picking universal and make sure that your frequencies are set like this. 9750 is for the low band, 10600 is for the high band. And once that's set and you get a signal like this, you know that you have the correct LNB frequency. Now, just to demonstrate here, watch if I change the oscillating frequency, what happens. So now what's happening is the receiver is miscalculating where to find the channels. That's why getting those frequencies set right is so important. Now if you're not sure what these frequencies are, have a look at the label of your LNB. And on there you'll see a line that says LO for local oscillating frequency. And those are the frequencies you need to make sure are entered into your receiver. Now the other thing you'll notice is that the 22K line is blued out. Now that's the 22 kilohertz tone the receiver is going to use to switch between the high and low band channels. And that's automatically set for you when you choose universal LNB. And one other thing to watch out for is make sure that the LNB power is turned on. Otherwise, your LNB won't get any voltage from the receiver and it won't work. A uh, variation of the universal LNB is also found on these Shaw or Star Choice satellite dishes. These are used in Canada for subscription services, but they also work great for free satellite TV because they have linear KU band LNBs built into them. Now the LNB unit on these dishes actually has two LNBs. So if you aim it right, you could actually receive two satellites with one dish. And there's a multi-switch inside this unit that controls the back and forth switching between those two satellites. And looking at the receiver setup for these Shaw Star Choice dishes, it's a universal LNB. And the low band mixing frequency is 9750. The high band one though is a little different, 10750. And once again, you can see that the 22 kilohertz tone is automatically set and switches as required as you change channels.